Hey, what is going on everybody? East Tactics here. And I wanted to make a quick video for you guys to show you exactly how, especially for those of you that have picked up the 1631 Springs from Century Springs. Um, I do have a couple of different videos to talk about the shock spring experiment. These are the 1631s. They are um, probably double the stiffness as stock as opposed to the ones that I've been running, which are the 10548s. I think that's the right number. These are like the equivalent of the Nero shock springs, which um, the whole, the video series goes over, you know, the whole concept of uh, having your heavy, a heavier vehicle with all of the M2C goodies, and then just wanting to reduce chassis slap, especially for like skate park bashing, and ultimately just kind of reprieve a little bit of the um, shock that happens to your electronics. This concept of upgrading your springs has been an experiment that I've been dabbling with for quite a long time. Now, what I'm getting at though, is this is three times the stiffness, so there's a lot of things you need to do, you know, having the M2C shock caps, putting um, actually differential fluid in there to mitigate rebound. Those two concepts really do help a lot with the bounce. So anyway, my goal is I kinda wanna back off from this a little bit, from 18 pound Nero springs, which I've enjoyed, and I've shared a lot of details about, to the 1631 springs. Now these are a 12 pound spring, so, Instead of being three times the stiffness, we're talking only two times the stiffness of your stock layout. So uh, these springs, you know, they're, you can see in my hand, they're a lot easier to squish. Um, so you're gonna get some of that plushness back, but then you're still gonna have sort of shock mitigation, chassis slap mitigation, you know, just strength underneath your heavier vehicles. So if you're like me and your, your vehicle weighs 16 or 17 pounds, then in my opinion, the stock six pound springs, which were designed for a 12 pound vehicle, um, you know, isn't enough. And so something has to basically go into the arena of kind of beefing these up. Anyway, long story short, I'm explaining all this right now is because when you do pick up the 1631 springs, which again, I found to be a perfect length, a perfect, you know, um, dimensions that you need. Uh, it's hard to find, like a ton of research was put into finding the right spring that fits around these shocks. These ones do not have a shaved end. They have to be flattened here. So there's different terminology for the types of ends that you get. Um, I don't know if I have a free roaming spring right now that's, yeah, right here. So if you take a look, you can see how that's really thin and flattened out right there. That is, that came from the manufacturer this way and it's a certain style of spring. You want that to be for RC cars because you want it to sit flat here and here, right? So the 1631s, unfortunately, do not have that concept. So I want to show you guys the easiest way if you do decide to pick these up. You're gonna see a lot of future videos with me running these and, and talking about how I like them. So anyway, you have to shave these down. And so the best way to do it is as follows. What you do is you take your spring, and you get some sort of a padding. This is like um, a piece of my yoga mat that I use. I, I love yoga mats, as you can see, I use them for my pit station. Um, and just kind of squeeze this into the vise, right? So that it's nice and tight. You leave a little bit of excess here, okay? Now the tool that you want to use is, you know, if you have a Dremel, then you want to pick up, um, these right here are your sanding, they're like sandpaper, okay? And they go on to basically, then you get this little adapter, which usually comes with these. And if you were, if I were to slide this piece off, you can tell this one's been used for a different uh, purpose. I think it was for Pinewood Derby stuff. So anyway, that's what you wanna use to do this. Okay, this is a brand new one, a little bit, it's like a heavier grit. It doesn't really matter what grit you use, but um, obviously the, the grittier, it works better. And then I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like. This, the reason why it's, the reason why it's really easy to use one of these is because these have such a wide surface that you can just make quick work of it. If you were trying to say, you know, Dremel this down using, you know, something like this right here, it would be messy, it would not be even, um, you'd probably have bumps everywhere and it would take forever, okay? So let me go ahead and set it up and I'll show you how quick and easy it is to do. So if I focus more attention on this section from about six o'clock or from about nine o'clock to six o'clock and take off more there and then I take off less and less and less as I get around to right here and to about this area. 
you see, I actually started a little bit and you can see it starting to flatten out right there. So I'll modify the volume here so it's not blowing your ears off. Yeah, that's toasty. So the spring is not super hot on the other side, so I'm gonna pull it out and we're gonna take a close look at it. See how nice and flat that sits versus the wobble you get here. So yeah, you'll end up doing that to both ends on all four shocks, so a total of eight times. But as you can see here, it takes like 30 seconds, 45 seconds per spring to do it um, with this method. Anyway guys, that's pretty much the gist of what I wanted to share with you in this video. Um, I prefaced this in the beginning of the video with some, some text at the bottom of the screen, but I'll just mention it again. Make 100% sure that you do wear eye protection when doing this. Anytime you're using a Dremel when sparks are flying, uh, just anytime you're using a Dremel at all, you really should put on some safety goggles so that you can be safe, so you don't get any debris in your eye. All right, guys, well, that's a wrap for this video. Again, I just wanted to show you guys the quickest and easiest way to actually modify those springs if you do pick them up. Um, stay tuned for upcoming videos, bash videos with me romping with this setup. Got a lot of interesting ideas for videos when it comes to the new season with the warm season, so stay tuned. Anyway, East Tactics out. And there you have it.